Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm now on question number seven in this P1, Pure Mathematics P1, International A Level at Excel um, from January 2021. And this question here is about solving this equation f of x equals 9, where f of x equals 2x minus 3 times root x minus 5, and x is greater than 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to equate this to 9. So 2x minus 3 times the square root of x minus 5 equals 9. So then I'm going to um, add, subtract 9 from both sides. So 2x minus 3 times root x minus 14 equals 0. Now what we have here is a situation where we've got like what's called a hidden quadratic equation. Because I know that x is the square of root x. So it's kind of like a quadratic equation. And to make it clear, what you could do is you could say, let's take uh, the square root of x and say, let it equal a letter, for example, b. Let b be the square root of x. In which case, if I square b, I'm going to get x. So I can replace the x with b squared. Okay, so I've just I've said, let b equals root x. So I can re replace x with b squared. So I've got 2b squared minus, and I can replace the root x with b and I've got minus 14 equals 0. So now I have a quadratic equation. Okay, it's the form of a quadratic, which I can solve by, I can try to factorize. Let me just use my grid method here. I like to use this, this, this little method here. So I've made a grid here. I just have to now put the values in. 2b squared in this corner, minus 14 in this corner. So I need to find two numbers here which multiply to give me the same as this product. So the product has to be minus 28b squared. And the sum of these two numbers must be the same as this sum, which is minus 3b. Okay, so think of all the ways of getting 28. 7 times 4 is the one it looks like. 7 fours are 28. And 7 and 4, when you add them, when they've got different signs, you got minus 3b. So one is a positive number, one is a negative number. The negative must be 7b and the positive must be 4b. If I multiply them together, I get minus 28b squared. If I add them together, I get minus 3b. So now I can look for a common factor from these two. If I look at this, this, this column, what's common is 2 and b. I know 2b times 1b is 2b squared, and 2b times 2 is plus 4b, and b times minus 7 is 7b. I have now got my factors, 2b minus 7, and b plus 2. This is a plus 2 here. All right, so that's equal to 0. So I have um, 2b equals negative 7, um, in which case b equals minus 7 over 2, and b equals, sorry, 2b equals 7. Okay, 2b equals 7, in which case b is equal to 7 over 2, or b equals negative 2. Now, I know that the square root of x is equal to b, as we stated in the beginning. So I can replace the, square, the, the, the b with 7 over 2. And I can also replace the b with minus 2. So for this one, there's absolutely no problem. This is the positive value. What this square root of x means, it means the positive square root of x equals 7 over 2. And that's fine. So x is going to be 49 over 4, to square both sides. Now, what this means, as I, I re reiterate, it's very important, this means the positive square root of x equals minus 2. Now, there's no such thing of a positive square root of x being negative. You can't have a positive square root of x by definition, which is negative. So for this, there'll be no solution. Now, a lot of students don't understand why there's no solution for such a thing, um, but it's, it's, it comes from um, the fact that the square root of x means, by definition, the positive square root of x. Okay, If it had a plus or minus in front of it, or just a minus in front of it, it would refer to the negative square root of x. But if you write down the positive square root of x equals negative 2, that does not make sense. Okay, Because there's no positive square root of x which can be negative. Okay, So that's all, uh, how you can understand that whenever you have a situation like this, is a negative value, there will be no solution. Okay, and one way to, sh to show 
that this will not lead to a solution. Just imagine if you did try to find a solution, say, okay, that means x is going to equal 4. Okay, this is actually not a solution. This is the only solution. We know that. This is not a solution. No solution. But imagine we say that if we did follow on from this, then that means x equals 4. Now, if you put this back into the original equation, okay, I'll show you putting both of these into the original equation, which was f of x equals 9, so it's 2x minus 3 root x minus 5. So when I put these numbers into here, according to these answers, they should both give me 9. Okay, so let me put um, 49 over 4 instead of x. So we had the solutions x equals 49 over 4, and I said that was a true solution, and x equals 4, which is a false solution. And let's see what happens when we substitute them back into the original equation. So I'll start with 49 over 4. So I have 2 times 49 over 4. Close bracket. Um, minus 3 times the square root of 49 over 4, which is 7 over 2 basically. Um, minus, uh, no, out of the square root, minus 5. That gives me 9. Okay, so that's correct. Okay, that's fine. If I replace the 49 over 4 with 4, okay, according to, um, you know, what you might think, if you didn't realize that it's actually not a solution, we should get 9. But what do we get? It doesn't give us the answer that we require. It gives us minus 3. Okay, so that's why we cannot use this answer. So whenever you have the square root of something, it means like the square root of x that wasn't there already. See, this square root of x was already there. Okay, if it's already there, then it means a positive square root of x. If I've got a number, if I've got a question like, you know, x squared equals 49, and then I write x equals, then I put myself plus or minus the square root of 49, I'm the one putting the square root sign there myself. And I know that if x squared equals 49, the next can either be plus or minus 7. Okay, because I'm solving this equation, I'm the one who put it there. But if the square root sign is already there in the question, like it is here, that square root means the positive square root of. Okay, so that's why this is not a solution. x equals 4 is not a solution. This is the only solution here. Okay, so that's part A done. Now for part B, it says solve f, the second differential of f equals 6. f double dash, so that's not the first derivative, that's the second derivative. So first thing I have to do is write this in a form I can differentiate. So 2x minus 3 times x to the power of a half minus 5. So the first derivative, f dash of x, is going to be 2 minus 3 over 2x to the power of minus a half. Multiply by the power, take one from the power. The constant will go, the 2x term will drop the, the x. Then the second derivative is f double dash x is equal to the constant's going to go. I'm going to have minus a half times minus 3 over 2, which is... 3 over 4 positive, x to the power of minus 3 over 2. So now I have to solve this equation equals 6. So I've got to solve this equation, I've got to equate it to 6 and solve. So let me equate this to 6. So they say solve f double dash x equals 6. So I'm going to have 3 quarters, x to the power of minus 3 over 2 equals 6. Okay, this is like... Um, Basically, 3 over 4x to the power of 3 over 2 equals 6. And if I rearrange this, I'll have 3 over 4 times 6 equals x to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, so I've just kind of cross multiply, multiply both sides by x to the power of 3 over 2 and divide both sides by 6. So through this 3 and this 6 cancel to leave you with 2. That's 1 over 8 equals x to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, so that's something is easy to solve x to the power of 3 over 2 is equal to 1 over 8. So there's two ways I can do this. I can say, let me raise this to a power. I want to find x, so let me raise it to the reciprocal of this power, because when I multiply them together, I'll get 1. So I have to also raise this to the power of 2 thirds. So I am end up with x equals, and now this means the cube root of 1 over 8, Okay, which is um, 1 over 8 squared, sorry. The cube root of 1 over 8 squared. This is the root, this is the power, 
So the cube root of 1 over 8 is a half, and a half squared is a quarter. So the solution to that is x equals 1 over 4. And okay, now we could have answered this question in a slightly different way um, when we got to this stage here, which is x to the power of 3 over 2 equals 1 over 8. I can rewrite this as the cube, the square root of x cubed. The square root of x cubed, which is, which, um, is 1 over 8. So now what I can do is I can say I need to um, get rid of the square root, so I need to square both sides. So I have x to the power of 3 equals 1 over 8 squared. And I also need to cube root both sides to get x. So I have x equals the cube root of 1 over 8 squared. And then it's the same as before. We can find the cube root of 1 over 8, which is a half. And a half squared is a quarter. So we have the same answer as before, just a slightly different way at the end. So um, here the important thing is to find the second differential and then just know how to deal with solving this equation. Um, now, other questions from this paper will be found in this playlist over here. Other questions from this topic of uh, solving equations, I guess quadratics, will be over here. And you can link to my channel by clicking on this link here. And on top here you'll find a, pay, um, a link to some other P1 papers you might want to watch. So that completes question 7. Thank you very much. See you soon.